phonics class today, we are learning about the letter G, which has two sounds, the hard G sound and the soft G sound. Let's go. Let's start with the hard G sound, which can be found in the beginning and the middle of words. The first one is in the beginning, like in goat, g, g, g. G, g, goat. Good. Here are some more examples of the hard G sound, g, g, g. We have g, g, good. We have g, g, ghost. And we also have g, g, game. Very good. The hard G can also be found in the middle or the ending of words. For example, we have it here in hug, h, ug. Hug. We also have it in the middle, like in dragon. Dr, ag, on, dragon. Good. Also in the ending here, like in flag. Fl, ag, flag. Nice. Once again, hard G is g, g, g. Now we have soft G, which is j, j, g, which is the J sound as well. For example, we have gym, j, j, g, j, j, gym, good. We also have it in giant, j, j, giant. We also have j, j, genius, nice. A very smart person is a genius. We also have giraffe, j, j, giraffe. Once again, soft G is J, J. It can also be found in the middle of words like in page, P, age, page. We also have magic, M, A, J, I, K, magic. Good. J, J, G is also found in orange, orange, J. Very good. Now it's your turn to do some practice. I will give you some words and you have to tell me if it is a hard G sound or a soft G sound. Are you ready? The first word is cage. Cage. Is it a hard G sound, which is g, 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 or a soft G sound, j, j, g? What do you think? Good. Cage is a soft G sound. J, j, g, cage, j. Good. The next word is gentle. The mother is very gentle with her baby. J, j, gentle. Is it a hard G or a soft G? Good. Gentle is a soft G in the beginning of the word. Next, we have glass. Glass. Is this a hard G or a soft G? What do you think? Good. Glass is a hard G. G, 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 glass. Finally, we have frog. Frog. Is that a hard G sound or a soft G sound? Good. Frog, G, G, is a hard G sound. G, 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 frog. Nice. Now it's time to do some reading practice. I will give you some sentences to read and a few moments to read it. Are you ready? The first one is this one. The gentle green giant goes to the gym. Good. The gentle green giant goes to the gym. That one was tricky. There are many hard G sounds and soft G sounds too. If you can read this, then try this one, level two. The orange dragon got germs on the bridge. Nice. How was that? The orange dragon got germs on the bridge. That one was tricky. If you can read that one, you're amazing and you're ready for level three. The hardest sentence is this one. I'll give you a moment. Ready? The good girl's dog is large and dangerous. Nice. The good girl's dog is large and dangerous. Very good. If you can read that, you're amazing. 
Now it's time to do some review. Today we learned the letter G which has two sounds, hard G and soft G. For hard G, you can find the words in the beginning. G, G, G is also G, G, goat. We also have it in the middle like in hug, hug, G. Then we have the soft G which is J, J, G like the letter J. We have Jim, J, J, Jim. We also have orange, J, J, orange. Nice. Take some time to practice the hard G and soft G sound and see how many other words you can think of with these sounds. After this, I'll see you in the next class for some more learning fun. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye bye. For Comic Book Tuesday today, we are reading part 3 of the Noodle Heads book series. Today's book is Do the Impossible by Ted Arnold, Martha Hamilton and Mitch Weiss. Are you ready? I'm Mac and I'm Mac. We're the Noodle Heads. See? It's dark and empty in here. It even echoes. Listen. Hello, 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 hello. I like it that way. Hey, Mac, there's Uncle Zitty. Hi, Uncle Zitty. Oh, it's Mac and Mac. I have a great story for them today. What's new with you? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Tell us. We will believe anything. Well, I just watched the impossible happen. See that flat rock? A frog was sitting there, then a snake slid up and bit its behind. That frog turned around and bit the snake's tail. The snake kept swallowing the frog and the frog kept swallowing the snake. Finally, they both swallowed each other and poof, they're both gone. But, but... That's impossible! Exactly. But look at that rock. There's nothing on it, right? Poof! They're gone! Okay, time to get back to work. You know what they say, time waits for no one. He he he. It sounds impossible. But they're actually gone. I know. Poof! Amazing! Chapter 1. Walk the Walk. Uncle Zitty always tells the best stories. Hey, if we do something impossible, people will tell stories about us. We'll be famous. Forget it. I'm not eating any frogs or snakes. No, no. We gotta think up our own impossible thing. Ooh. How do we do something if it's impossible to do it? Uncle Zitty is always saying two heads are better than one. If we put our heads together, we can think of something. Any ideas yet? No, but I can hear the ocean. Never mind. Besides, I get my best ideas while you're walking. Walking is a great idea. Uncle Zitty once said, always put your best foot forward. Hmm, mine are both messed up. This one is a real beauty. Here I go. Ooh, drag step, drag step, drag step, forget that. It's hard always putting your best foot forward. Uncle City said you can't just talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk. I never understood that. Me neither. Uncle Zitty talks a lot. He should walk more, like us. We walk the walk. Hey, that's it. What's it? What if we do some impossible walking? Such as? Well, maybe... Okay, I got it. We could walk around the world. That's impossible. Exactly. And it's easy. I'll draw you a picture. Here's the world. Here's our house. We just walk away from our house until we come around and right back to our house. What about oceans and cliffs and quicksand and stuff? You got a better idea? No? Then let's go ask mum. Mum, we want to walk around the world. That's impossible. Exactly. We want to do the impossible and then we'll be famous. Forget it. That's too far for you to go. Chapter 2. 
seeing stars. Mom, didn't you ever want to do something impossible? Well, once, when I was your age, I wanted to count the stars. But that's impossible! Exactly. Did you do it? No, silly, it's impossible. What if we help you count the stars? Then you will let us walk around the world. We are good counters. Hmm, I think... Great! While you're thinking, we'll get started counting. Did you ever wonder where stars go in the daytime? No, me neither. But you just wondered about it. No, I wondered if you wondered. Quiet, it's getting dark. There's a star, write it down. Okay, that's one. I see three more. One and three is thirteen. I see six more. Thirteen and six is... Wait, wait, I see... I see... Wow! I see a bazillion! Whoa! There are lots of stars. I had no idea. Mac, look! Some stars fell into Mum's wash tub. We have to save them! How? Throw them back into the sky. Are they heavy? No, they're light. Let me help. Hey, it's fun saving stars. Okay, they're all back up in the sky. We did it. We saved the stars. Stop right there. What have you two been doing? Counting stars and saving stars. Oh, oh, okay. So tell me, how many stars are there? A bazillion. Wait, you forgot to count the stars that fell into the wash tub. We have to go back and count them all again. Whoa, hold on. That will have to wait until tomorrow. Right now, it's time for bed. Oh, mom. Chapter 3. Follow your shoes. The next morning, mom, we can't wait to count stars for you, but it won't be dark for a long time. Well, I have an idea. Tell us. Your uncle Ziti says, there are as many stars as there are grains of sand. Really? So... Oh, I know. If we count the stars, then we will know how many grains of sands there are. Who cares how many grains of sands there are? But if you count the grains of sands, ah, then we'll know how many stars there are. Exactly. I knew that. And we don't have to wait until dark. We can count sand in the daylight. Wait, we need a plan. First, we need to find the sand. Then we count the sand. Good plan. But we have to walk in just one direction so we don't count the same grains of sand twice. Got it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Much later. 91, 92, 93, 94. Woo, there's a lot of sand. I need a rest. Me too. But don't forget the direction we're going in. We don't want to count the same sand twice. We can take off our shoe and point them the way we want to go when we get up. Good idea! Woo! Meepo walked by. Oh look, Mac and Mac are napping. Hmm, they took off their shoes. That must mean they don't want them anymore. I'll just try them on. Rats, none of them fit. Oh well, they're too smelly anyway. Yawn! That was a good rest. Let's start counting again. Okay, so we go the same way our shoes are pointing. Where did we stop counting? I think 34. There's some. So that's 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Later, 56, 57, 58. Much later. Huh? 126, 127, um, Mac, we're back at our house. Whoa, you know what that means? It means we're home? No, it means we walked around the world. Remember, here's the world. From our house, we walked in one direction until we came back home. We did it! Huh? We did the impossible. So you counted the grains of sands? How many are there? Um, 126. No, 127. That's funny. I was sure there would be more. No, that's not the impossible thing we did. We did our own impossible thing. We walked all the way around the world. That's impossible. Exactly. Well then, finish up your lunch and tell me all about it. We're gonna be famous. We're gonna be famous. That night. Now it's my turn to do the impossible. I will tell you a story that never ends. That's impossible. 
Exactly! Now hush! Once, there were two boys named Mac and Mac. We're in the story! We're famous! One night, they took a walk. As they walked, they counted the stars. One, two, three, four. One, two, six, one, two, seven, one, two, eight, one, two, nine. The end. Oh, the noodle heads are very funny and quirky. Do you like this story? Let me know down below. And also, what are some impossible things that you want to do? That's all for this week. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For social studies class today, we are learning all about nurses, one of the most important occupations in the world, with this book by Cecilia Minden and Linda M. Armentrout. Let's go! Hello, my name is Amber. Many people live and work in my neighbourhood. Each of them helps the neighbourhood in different ways. I thought of all the things I like to do. I like taking care of my friends. I like to exercise and eat healthy foods. I like to solve problems. How could I help my neighbourhood when I grow up? I know, I can be a nurse. Nurses take care of people who are sick. They enjoy helping others. Best of all, nurses make people feel better and teach them how to stay healthy. Learn about this neighbourhood helper. The best way to learn is to ask questions. Words such as who, what, where, when and why will help me learn about being a nurse. Let's go! Who can become a nurse? Boys and girls who are good at solving problems, excited about learning and who enjoy helping others may want to become nurses. It is very important for nurses to be good listeners. They must pay attention when patients tell them what is wrong. Nurses are very important to the neighbourhood. They care for the people who are sick. Nurses also show people things they can do to stay healthy. How can I explore this job? Teenagers are sometimes allowed to help out in hospitals. This is a great way to see what kind of work nurses do. You should also talk to your nurse next time you visit the doctor. Ask her what she likes best about her job. Now let's meet a nurse. This is Mary Cordova. She is a nurse in a doctor's office in Hanford, California. She knew when she was little that she wanted to be a nurse. How many nurses are there? There are about 2,300,000 people who work as nurses. I really like doing what I do, says Mary. I like that I'm able to help. When Mary is not working in the doctor's office, she enjoys helping her husband remodel old cars. Where can I learn to be a nurse? People who want to become nurses must take classes in special nursing programs. There are different programs available. The programs take different amounts of time to complete. Nurses also have to pass a test to get the nursing license. The state provides this license and the license gives the nurse permission to work. How much school will I need? Many nurses have a four-year college degree. Some nurses study for two to three years at community college. A few nurses study for about three years in hospitals. Nurses take a test to get their license once they finish their training. A nurse with a license is called a registered nurse or RN. What does a nurse need to do the job? Mary has many different instruments to help care for patients. One important instrument is the stethoscope. The stethoscope helps Mary listen to the sounds inside a person's body. Everything makes a different sound. Your heart makes a lub dub sound. Your stomach sometimes gargles. It even makes a really loud growl if you are really hungry. Now what are some instruments I will use as a nurse? You will need bandages, a computer, stethoscope and a thermometer. Mary often uses special words when she speaks to doctors and other nurses. Sometimes Mary needs help right away. Then she asks for help. STAT. This is short for the Latin word statum, which means immediately or right away. Mary might use this word during an emergency when it is important to act quickly. STAT. What clothes will I wear? Comfortable shoes, latex gloves and scrubs or uniform. Where does a nurse work? Mary works in a doctor's office. Other nurses work in hospitals, factories or schools. Many nurses are in the military too. 
Some nurses teach classes for students who are training to be nurses. Nurses may work in different places, but they are always helping people. Mary's job is different every day. She sees many patients who need her help. Mary uses different pieces of information to decide how to care for her patients. How fast is someone's heart beating? Does the person have a cut or sore? Does the patient need medicine? Is the patient sad or scared? I like it when the patients come back and they are really happy to see me, says Mary. It's so nice to see them doing well. I try to be friendly. I want to make them feel better. How much money will I make? Most nurses make between $34,000 to $70,000 a year in America. Who works with nurses? Mary works with doctors to give her patients the very best care. Nurses also work with physical therapists, nursing and medical students and counsellors too. Nurses also work closely with a patient's family. Some nurses help family members care for the patients at home. These nurses are called home healthcare nurses. What other jobs might I like? There is also a paramedic, a physical therapist or a physician. This is the emergency room. The ER nurses often see many people during the workday. When do ER nurses help people? Have you ever broken a bone? Someone probably took you to the emergency room or ER. People go to the ER if they have had an accident or need medical help quickly. Nurses in the ER must be ready to assess and care for any medical emergency. How might my job change? Some nurses become teachers in nursing schools. Others go back to school and learn more complicated skills. Some nurses with a lot of experience oversee other nurses in hospitals, home care or nursing homes too. I want to be a nurse. I think being a nurse would be a great way to be a neighborhood helper. Someday I may be the nurse who helps you feel better. Why don't you try being a nurse too? Do you think you would like to be a nurse? Nurses often measure a person's pulse rate. Try measuring your own pulse rate. Find your pulse rate by putting two fingers on the palm side of your wrist like this. Can you feel the blood pumping? Then count how many times your pulse beats in a minute. This is your pulse rate. A child's pulse rate should be 85 to 100 beats per minute. Try jumping up and down 20 times. Then take your pulse rate again. Is it lower or higher? What do you think caused the change in your pulse rate? Let me know down below. Now it's your turn. What do you think about nurses? They're pretty cool, huh? Share with me down below why you think they're so important and what else did you learn today about nurses? Take your time and after this, I'll see you in the next class for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. In this week's Animal World, we are reading and learning about the porcupine with this book by Emily Green. Let's go. Porcupines are rodents. They live in forests, grasslands and deserts. Some porcupines climb trees to find food. Sharp claws help porcupines climb. Porcupines eat bark, plants, nuts and fruits. Mm, very yummy and healthy. Porcupines have four long front teeth. They use them to gnaw on food. Very good. Porcupines have soft fur that keep them warm. They have thick guard hairs that keep them dry. Porcupines also have stiff hairs called quills. Quills have sharp pointed tips. Quills usually lie flat. Porcupines raise their quills if they sense danger. Oh, very scary. Porcupines stamp their feet and hiss when they see predators. They shake their tails to loosen their quills. Ooh. Porcupines use their quills to poke predators that get too close. Ouch! Now let's go through the seven words we learnt in today's book. The first one is claws. They are sharp, curved nails on the feet of porcupines Claws help porcupines climb. Gnaw is to bite or nibble on something for a very long time. Guard hairs are thick hairs that are longer than an animal's fur. Guard hairs help keep an animal dry. 
predators are animals that hunt other animals for food. Quills are stiff hairs with sharp pointed tips. Porcupines use their quills to poke predators that get too close. Rodents are a group of small animals that usually gnaw on their food and then sense is to become aware of. Now it's your turn to share what do you think about the porcupines? I think they're very cute and interesting. What do you think? Share with me down below what you think and also what you've learned in today's class. That's all for Animal World and I'll see you next week to learn about another amazing animal. Take care for now. Bye bye. In today's science and arts class, we are continuing into part three of the five senses. And today we are learning about tasting with this book by Lisa Owings. Let's go. Backyard barbecue. Your stomach growls as you climb out of the pool. It is time for some food. The table is piled with dozens of dishes. Your mouth starts to water. Everyone loads up plates and digs in. The burgers are savory. They go well with the sour slaw and sweet watermelon. You top off the meal with a big ice cream sundae. The flavors bring back your best memories of summer. What is tasting? Our tongues work with our noses to help us taste food. The tongue senses five basic tastes. They are sweet, sour, salty, bitter and savory. These tastes combine with the scents in food to make more complex flavors. As you chew, Food molecules move around inside the mouth. They pass through pores on the tongue's surface. Then they reach your taste buds. Thousands of taste buds line your tongue. Each has a group of hair-like receptor cells. Molecules in food stick to the receptor cells. The cells send messages to your brain about the taste. Chewing also moves air through the back of your nose. Cells tell your brain about scents in your food. Your brain then knows the flavor of your food. What tasting teaches? Tasting tells us what nutrients are in our food and drinks. Sweet foods have a lot of carbohydrates. Salty foods may be rich in minerals. Foods with a lot of protein tend to be savory. Tasting also teaches us what not to eat. Sour or bitter tastes warn food may be unsafe. The food may have gone bad or it may be harmful. Foods that taste good cause pleasure in the brain. We form strong memories of these foods and seek them out. Next time you dig into your favorite meal, you will enjoy the flavors even more. Now let's go through some of the words we learned in this book. Carbohydrates are parts of foods that provide energy. Combine is to mix together to make one thing. Complex is having many parts. Flavors are the tastes and smells of food. Minerals are types of nutrients found in the earth, such as salt. Molecules are the smallest pieces of substances. Molecules are too tiny for the eye to see. Nutrients are parts of foods living things need to survive. Nutrients come from foods like fruits and vegetables. Pores are tiny holes. Protein is a type of nutrient found in foods like meat and beans. Receptor cells are cells that send messages about taste or other senses to the brain. Savory is a meat-like taste that has a lot of flavor but is not sweet. Slaw is a salad made of raw chopped vegetables. Yummy! And finally, taste buds are groups of taste receptor cells that sense sweet, sour, salty, bitter or savory tastes. Now it's your turn to share what you think about tasting. What is your favorite food and why do you like it so much? Do you think tasting is important? Share with me down below. After this, I'll see you in the next class for some more learning fun. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.
In today's reading and comprehension, we are reading Rumpled Stilton Skin by Daniel Postgate. At the end of the story, we are doing some comprehension questions to test your understanding, so stay to the end. Are you ready? Let's go! There once lived a young girl who owned a cheese shop. She loved to eat all sorts of different cheeses. Adam, cheddar, brie, even Stilton, which is a very smelly cheese. But she hated the thick piece of crust at the end of the Stilton. It was hard and rumpled. She always gave it to her dog instead, and he loved it. One day, the girl received an invitation to a royal party. I can't go, she groaned. All my clothes stink like cheese. Just then, a funny man appeared. I will make you look lovely and smell delightful, he said. And in return, you will give me a present. Okay, said the girl. So the funny man set to work. He made her a beautiful dress. He styled her hair and he sprayed her with the finest perfume. That evening at the party, the girl looked and smelled terrific. The girl fell in love immediately and he asked her to marry him. She said yes and they were married at once. Suddenly, the funny little man appeared. I have come for my present, he said. The king offered him gold some land and a nice horse but the little man refused them all i want your dog said the man licking his lips and rubbing his tummy oh no cried the girl who was now the queen i love my dog too much to give it to you very well snarled the little man i will let you off if you can guess my name in three guesses fine said the queen is it Bernard? No, giggled the man. It's much more unusual than that. Okay. Hmm. Is it Toby? Asked the queen. No, no. One more to go, laughed the man, jumping from foot to foot. The queen thought the man was nastier than the hard end of the cheese she hated so much. You are worse than rumpled Stilton skin, she cried. The man stopped dancing and stared at her in disbelief. Did you say rumpled stilted skin? He gasped. Um, I think so, said the queen, fibbing a bit. Curses, exclaimed the man. You're right. Then he stormed off in a very bad mood and was never seen again. And the queen, her dog and the king, who also liked cheese, lived a very happy and smelly life together. The end. Oh, what a funny and smelly story. Did you like this one? Now let's do some questions. Question one, what type of shop does this young girl own? I'll give you a moment. The answer is cheese shop. This young girl owned a cheese shop. Question two, why did the young girl ask the man to make her a beautiful dress? What was wrong with her one? I'll give you a moment. She was going to a royal party, but her dress smelled like stinky cheese. And the final question for today, what is the name of this funny little man and how did she guess his name? His name was Rumpled Stilton Skin. And she guessed it because the queen was cursing him with what she hated most. Very good. How many of the questions did you get correct? Let me know down below. And also, share with me some things you liked about this book and what you found funny. After this, I'll see you in the next video for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.